an honor to be here today. Um, it's really, really cool to be in a city where pretty much no one has heard my poems before. And so I was like sifting through like, what poems am I gonna do? Um, so I'm just gonna get right into it and do as many poems as I can. Uh, so this first poem that I'm going to do uh, is actually one of, uh, actually, I'm gonna do another poem first, sorry. Um, so I go to a college that is a predominantly white university and I'm studying ethnic studies and all of it is about the resistance and how to navigate uh, a classroom where a lot of the times you're invisible even though you're the only one who looks like you in the classroom. Uh, so I wrote a poem kind of about that, about also being an immigrant in this country and uh, the experience of a student immigrant. So this poem is called Passport. Every year I must journey to the registrar's office, blue American passport in hand like a white flag, and I must prove to them that I am in fact now a U.S. citizen. This clerical error, however small, always reminds me of one thing. I am still not welcome here. Suddenly, the glances weigh heavier. It irritates me just a little more when they mispronounce my name, kicking the O's, L's, and U's around like magnet letters on a fridge. They rearrange my identity until they are comfortable breathing the foreign vowels. My name and teeth read to them like the storybooks they had as children they spell poverty, refugee, non-English speaker, why can't you just go back to your country? And I long to reply, where I'm from, we do not run. We root our families in whatever piece of earth we find ourselves on, and we do not run. So this is for those of you that have planted your feet on soil that does not welcome you, but have turned your legs into deep-rooted flower stems anyway when they ask you where you are really from. Tell them a collection of pillars that have held up and seen to the destruction of empires when they tell you your beauty is savage, your beauty is savage when they mark your nation as the face of poverty. Reply that your heart does not need their permission to beat. Dear Western savior, Africa does not need your pity like our problems only matter when you televise them. Africa is a loaded gun and you are too often standing on the wrong side of the barrel. She, Africa, this fall bride winter matriarch well versed in the language of trust and betrayal still slitting her wrists to show her oppressor she bleeds the same red but all they see is gold they do not see the star shine on her fingertips the blood red beneath the earth brown of her cheeks the Africa I know does not forget but keeps growing her streets are paved with the footprints of travelers on the road to Ife, Accra, Baturi, Cairo, Benghazi, Dakar. They call us developing like it's a dirty word but the Africa I know is the warm bath of mother's love. Arms like an aspen grove holding her children wherever they are. Bustling Ghanaian airports, dirt blocks in Lagos, Nigeria that the children have turned into kingdoms. Africa, this fall bride winter matriarch knows the land I, her daughter, stand in is a nation of earth patches integrated in like puzzle pieces. America, a land of immigrants, disassembled bodies still breaking open, ghost dancing with citizenship singing, take me home, spirit and all, so you sons and daughters with your flower stem legs when they tell you you don't belong remember where you're from and let your roots spread where you have planted them until they choke the hatred from every sentence and do not run thank you called Omi Ebimi, which means my family's water in Yoruba, and it's all about like my identity of being a uh, Nigerian and trying to also uh, like navigate American society. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this next poem I am going to read you. Um, I actually have it memorized. So I'm just gonna do that. 
Um, so in my youth program, they taught us kind of how to curse creatively. Uh, so this, I always tell people uh, I write poems so I don't fight people in the streets. Uh, so this is one of those poems that I wrote so I don't fight people in the streets. It's called On the Bad Days. My mother asks me why my poems are so abrasive. I tell her the words do what I cannot, that I was taught to be polite and good, that being a black girl is just too dangerous otherwise, so give them something they can digest. Soft words, pretty decibels, a body folded over and over into itself, but I am out of space. I'm seven different kinds of crazy, but I am braiding down my hair. I'm all kinds of unbuttoned, but damn if I don't know where the safety pins are. Fuck if I can't pray shit on the bad days. I know how to smile while the blood fills my mouth. I know how to cry silently in church. They told me I could be so beautiful if I was quiet enough. And now, I am beautiful because they cannot pronounce my name. I followed the rules and now pretty is a death sentence and I don't understand what folded hands are supposed to do against all this world and all these men and all this black hole of me. My mother asks me when I became so vulgar. I show her the fuck you hiding next to the hallelujah under my tongue Who I become when the bitch is showing When my mean bone is popping out I don't want to scare anyone I'm not supposed to Girls like me live safer dressed An apology, would they still love me? Smile at me, let me sit in their classrooms If they knew of the harpy growing in me If they knew my ribs were talons Mama, in this body, polite is just a colonization of my ugly Making these brick brown hands into something a white god could forgive I want to rip out my tongue and use that vascular machete To collect the splintered bones of all the well-meaning men Hunting for the beauty of exotic without the bite of it. I hope you break your teeth on this ancestral wisdom. There is no consumption without retribution when you try to jar a skeleton with a spirit like mine. You will only end up with shattered glass. The earthquake remnants of slave mistress, breeder, Sarah Bartman, the deviant body dissected primitive animal promiscuous eat me. I've been sharpening my teeth this anger is a self-cleansing knife. It is the sea storm of Yemaya, the vengeful spear of Ochosi Oshun, with a mouthful of names. The ocean will remember the bodies thrown into it and come back for the ones who gave her that heaviness. I become ocean when I dance. It is necessary to teach yourself refusal. Dance like you will break the handcuffs, like the body is a precious revolution. Move, black girl softly move, black girl violent as the storm they think you are, till they can see a field of roses in their concrete prisons. I twerk to heal, I step to reclaim my body, dropping the weight into the ground because I know the earth remembers me. Can you hear it? Thank you. Um, so this last poem that I'm going to do uh, is a poem that I wrote for, uh, so my school asked me to come and do their diversity conference. Uh, <laughs> thinking that I would be like, oh yes, see Boulder is so diverse. Look at all of the people of color we have on our brochures. <laughs> Um, but, and the theme was I am because we are, but I kind of flipped it to say we are because I am, because we cannot exist without the people who are, you know, the most ignored, the most disenfranchised. Those are the people who also make us who we are, so we cannot exist without them. Um, so yeah. This is for the students in the front of the room, ten minutes before class, wearing everything they have to prove on their skin. For the ones in the back with the 15 minute late stride, sweat from running for an hour, 
running for an hour late bus for the ones with three jobs and no scholarships, fighting to honor parents whom America has turned into shadows, the black fish without expensive lives or trust fund voices, the ones the institution will put on their brochures then grind into silent pavement after, the ones who are followed home, mistaken and mistreated as campus workers, the last ones to leave the library, the first to have their work questioned, double consciousness, gotta scrub the accents and abonics from our tongues, MLK visions, more jail cell Birmingham burning than I have a dream for the ones who find home in every hijab, head nod, dap up, spanglish whisper across the hall, clutching our traditions close beneath football jerseys while our cultures are worn as costumes year after year, our bodies washed white then displayed so clean for demographic reports. Diversity has become a gavel of a word, smacked down for extra funding, but we are more than numbers. We are more than what some say our hands are good for. Our hands know what it means to keep reaching even past those who see your breath as a nuisance, desperate to live like a human ladder towards heaven, a hope for those who died with fingers still inching towards the sky. I know I am my grandmother's dream come true because I am alive, because I am here. Because we are here, this heartbeat is a collective effort. I am because Asata. I am because Lalo. I am because Malcolm. I am because Amadou Diallo. I am because Tamir Rice. I am because Renisha McBride. I am because Philandro Castile. I am because Rakia Boyd. I am because Emmett Till and the promise of hope, the anticipation a victorious joy even when statistics point to obituary and not degree. I am because the history of this country is the steel fiber I rip from my throat to breathe every morning. I breathe in a classroom that would rather have me be invisible. I am visible on a campus with a privileged crowbar and I have not succumbed to the beatings. I am every brown body having to defend themselves in a history lecture. I am every ignored, upraised hand in the STEM field that refuses to give up. And ain't that a miracle? Ain't that something to sing about? Our ancestors proudly rising through us, a cavalcade against the backdrop of the flat irons. Ain't that the relentless love poem of the century? We are because I am. Thank you. One last poem for real, for real. Um, this is a poem I try and do at every meeting. Uh, it's the first, like, I guess, poem or performance poem, whatever it is, that I wrote. Um, I have not edited it since, and it's been like almost six years now. Um, so this is a poem that I wrote about my name, and for anyone else who has like a foreign or funny sounding name that uh, they weren't allowed to take pride in. That is, we look within before we name our children, for they will bear our bones. Precious. That is what my mother at a tender 14 named her unborn child, not knowing who would come first, boy or girl, just knowing it would be precious. But that is just one name embedded like a pillow to cushion the blows from the bullets that fly from the pistols that are my names. Toluwani ni precious. Oluwa fumilayo lajmo ke arewa. Toluwani ni is a lightning bolt. Means to God I belong because my mother labored nearly a month shooting prayers like arrows at the demons whom she would not allow to have her child. Oluwa fumilayo is honey in your mouth, 
means God has given me joy, the kind of joy that has the strength to come home after a 12 hour shift and breastfeed a baby whom she hopes will grow up to speak English like the best of them even now. When she cannot express herself, she will sigh and say, I once knew how to speak this language. I don't know where it went. And I long to wrap her in the womb of my arms. Tell her, Mama, who needs English when you speak the language of heavenly love? Olajumoke is a family heirloom, means wealth valued together like a fighting prize. But I hide it behind my teeth so no one gets too comfortable with me. Arewa is a legacy, means beautiful daughter of the beautiful one. Because my mother's first name is a runaway slave, she shed the chains of Christiana for the royal history of Adetolasi. She knew she was a queen, so she could not bear a name that would mean one thing to her colonizers and nothing to her tribe. But I used to hate my name. Once. I gave it to a boy and he returned it to me broken, mangled, and ugly. So I ran home, begging my mother to exchange it for something he could love. I screamed, call me Anna, call me Sarah, call me anything but this. I was choking on the cup of poison that I had drunk from a society that told me adaptation means renaming yourself, reinvent yourself in America. Two neat slaps across the face was all the CPR I needed. She said to Lua, do not reject gifts from God. Your name may not be refined like sugar that slips through the cracks of your fingers, but it is in fact the sugar cane that men must break their teeth on before being rewarded with the sweetness. Your name holds weight. Every syllable is a beat from the talking drum that your ancestors dance to, and though you are so much more than your name, it is your crown, so wear it. Thank you. Thank you all so much for having me.